Hello my 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting here with the ginormous box of the Creality CR10 Smart. I am going to unbox and assemble this printer for you. Let's get to it. As we get started, here is a look at the packaging. It does have a yellow label that says caution heavy. It also clearly shows the orientation of the printer, indicating that this side of the box is up. It also has an icon with two arrows pointing up. So I would like to extend my personal thanks to FedEx for holding this printer sideways over their shoulder and body slamming it onto my concrete stoop. I'm sure said body slam is an essential component of a successful delivery. Go ahead and remove the tape on your box. I have already done so. You will be greeted with a large piece of foam protecting the initial layer of components. Do be cautious, the manual may be sitting on top of that initial foam. Inside here, you will be greeted with a series of parts embedded in pre-cut foam. Not all of the visible parts will be removable at this time. Let's go through them together. Remove this bag. Remove any paperwork. Here is a sample spool of white filament. Be careful here. This is your screen. You may find it difficult to remove it. I did, the slot is very deep. Inside these two slots, there are two arms. You will see these little moon cuts. They allow you to get your finger in there. There will be one in this slot and one in this slot. In front of them is a larger slot. You can reach in and pull that up where you will find the filament mounting bracket along with the filament spool mounting slider thingy. Once you have removed those components, you may carefully grab this initial layer of foam and work it out. Then gently toss it aside. You will then be exposed to the beautiful print bed and main frame of your CR10 Smart Printer. We are going to proceed carefully from this point on. We will reach in here and hook our fingers beneath these two bars and gently work this top section out of the box. When removing this section from the box, you are going to be very careful not to grab your Z-Rods. You are going to get your fingers underneath like this and put no pressure upward or downward on these Z-Rods. You will gently support this component underneath this rail with no pressure on the Z-Rods. Place this aside. This brings us to the base of our printer. We will again reach underneath and slowly work it out of the foam. That is the last component in this box. You can take this box and gently discard it. Here we have the enormous footprint of the CR10 Smart. Here on the base, you will see a few components. One of them is this label showing the orientation to install your memory card, which is pins up. And this is a full size SD card. You can remove this sticker. Over here, you will see the very nice power button which is not the traditional rocker switch. Next to it is an ethernet connection, and next to that is a USB-A port labeled with the camera icon. Having a dedicated camera port on this printer was actually a pretty advanced feature at the time of this printer's initial release. Gently slide your print bed back, and have a look at the side here for a piece of tape covering a wire. Go ahead and remove that piece of tape. Be very careful not to remove the wire with it. If we tear this wire, we are not going to have a fun day. We are now going to attach the two main components of the printer together. Find your bag full of screws and Allen keys. Your CR10 Smart is hiding one more secret, and that is a set of tools inside this accessory drawer. Gently open up this tray and remove this piece of foam and you'll discover clippers, a wrench, a nozzle wrench, a USB card reader, an SD card, a nozzle declogger, a series of spare nozzles, Bowden clips, and coupler locks, and all of the Allen keys required to build this printer. 
we will be using these four large black screws. Very carefully slide this over. The hot end will face the front of the printer. It may feel awkward at first, but these bars will in fact slip nicely into the cutouts on the base of your printer on both sides. Creality's manual asks for you to lower the hot end axis to the center point of the printer. You will do this by placing a finger on these couplers and turning together in the same direction. One direction will go down, one direction will go up. You may also do this by grabbing the belt and gently moving the belt. This is a much faster method, however I'm not a huge fan of this and I prefer using the coupler. I just feel like it's safer for the printer, but you may go ahead and be the judge of that. With the hot end axis in the center, we can now go ahead and bolt these two components together. You may simply slide your printer off the side of your building surface, or you may prop the entire printer up on a filament spool or something else. We will simply finger tighten and then do the other side. With all four bolts finger tight, go ahead and snug them up. When you are done tightening your nuts like this, turn your Allen key like an L, like a hockey stick, in order to finish snugging them up. Now that we are here, Let's point our eyes up here towards the hot end and you'll find these two connections. There is a harness dangling from your printer with these two connectors right here. Each one fits only in one slot. They are also keyed so they only fit in one direction. Go ahead and connect them. It will look like this. With this connection done, we'll move our eyes back down where you'll find these two loose connectors right here. The first one is quite simple. It is this black one right here and it will connect to this female black one right here hanging off of this sensor. It only fits one way. Simply snap them together. They will click. To connect your stepper harness, you will need to turn the printer around and slide your bed all the way forward. This will expose this connector right here. This harness fits only one way with the notches up. Please connect this carefully. If you move your eyes to the other side of the printer, you will see the exact same connection on the other stepper motor. Next up, we will install our screen. Simply take the screen, flip it over, and connect this harness to the white connector inside the screen. It is notched and only fits one way. With the harness installed, tilt the screen this way, slide it over to three notches, Place your thumbs on top of the screen, your fingers under the printer itself, and lock it down. Your screen will be firmly in place. You may go ahead and peel off the protective film. Next up, we will install these support braces. These go on the back side of the printer, so spin your printer around. You will find the connection for the support bracket right here and right here. Take this nut and spin it down till it's not tight, just loose enough that we can still turn this eye. Left will make it longer, right will make it shorter. The same on the other side. You will have two sets of three pieces, one long, one short, and one washer. The long and washer go on the bottom, 
the short go on the top. This washer goes right here over the rail. So we will place the long screw through the eye, the washer on the other side. and install a bolt, washer, and eye, like so. We will then adjust this eye in order to line up with this hole on the outside. Turning it left will make it longer, turning it right will make it shorter. If you find you have to bring it out so far that the bolt becomes really loose, take the whole thing and turn it counterclockwise in order to unscrew from the bottom, making the bottom bolt longer. Once you have a good balance between the top and bottom bolt, use the short bolt and secure the whole thing in place. With this in place, turn the nut on the top and the bottom and snug them up with a small wrench. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. The top one will turn this way, the bottom one will turn the opposite way. Once these nuts are both tight, you'll have a firm supporting brace. Go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side. With both support beams inside, it's time to install our filament spool holder. You will install it to the right of the screen right here underneath this rail, directly below the filament runout sensor. The spool holder uses a somewhat annoying rotating brace that will rotate, wedging itself between the rails, and then using the pressure of tightening the screw, will wedge itself in, securing the holder in place. There are two of them. Go ahead and be sure you have two of these installed. Again, very loosely and we're going to position them left to right so they slip inside this rail. Go ahead and do that now. Watch what happens as I tighten this brace. You will see the brace turns upward and then tightens against the rail. That's what holds it in place. To install the final part of the filament spool holder, simply take the roller, slide it over the arm and turn it clockwise until it locks into place. You will notice the spool on the CR10 Smart does in fact turn, so you will need to grab the end in order to lock it into place. Your spool holder is now installed. If you find your spool holder is too floppy, simply place a socket into the bolt head and a wrench over the bolt below and tighten that bolt. However, you will likely find your arm does still very easily fold inward. And here it is, our Creality CR10 is complete, ready for some adjusting, configuring, and test printing. We'll do that together next. You're on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3DRundown.com, and I'm building the awesome Creality CR10 Smart was today's adventure. Then gently, then gently. Hey.